I'm Claire Smith, I'm a senior policy officer working on avian influenza uh, UK wide for RSPB and we're at Fowles Hugh in North East Scotland today. Last year, starting in probably the, the end of April, we literally lost tens of thousands of seabirds um, UK-wide. Really started off in Scotland, and then the virus sort of spread down into sort of northeast England, finally t reaching sort of Wales and the, the Channel Islands by sort of uh, late July, August, September time. Things quietened down a bit in the autumn and we thought it maybe wasn't going to be so bad but once we got into November we started seeing mute swan, gulls, Canada geese, UK wide being hit, lots of people seeing stuff in the local parks um, and then some of the rarer geese started being hit so the uh, Greenland barnacle geese on Isla, Col and, and Tyree and we've probably lost well over 2,000 Greenland barnacle geese on, on Isla this autumn winter. We've had an overwhelming response to the appeal and um, really grateful to people. I think people seeing the images, you know, starting off with Mer's Head and then as, as things went through the seabird colony and even and then people seeing it in their, their local areas. That's allowed uh, for my job to be created and funded so that I can um, lead on stuff UK wide, working with all the, the UK government and the devolved governments and all the, the nature conservation bodies to push them to do more. It's enabling us to do a lot more research into what's going on um, with birds. So looking at um, some of the demographics of the barnacle geese on the Solway to see how that population has been affected and then this summer we're looking to resurvey a lot of seabird colonies to get updated population counts because it could be there's real changes in numbers for some of these birds and the reason that matters is that when people are then looking at um, developments or other things that might impact birds we need to understand the, the real impacts on that getting a better understanding of how the virus spreads through colonies means that we can think about if there's things that we should be doing so if there's things to divide up colonies or to remove dead birds or if we want to change activities that happen around uh, bird colonies so maybe access or other management activities just to try and take the pressure off. So when we talk about threats to seabird colonies, we're often concerned about the effects to productivity, so the effects on chicks, and we're often concerned about adult birds not being able to feed chicks um, and chicks dying. But what was different about last summer was we were losing breeding adults. And the reason that matters for seabirds is they're really slow breeding. So birds will often not breed until they're maybe four or five years old, raise only one or two chicks a year, but sometimes it might be several years between they successfully fledge a chick. So when you lose breeding adults, that's a really bad knock to a species. So the practical things that we can do for seabirds are a lot of the things that we've been asking for for a long time. There's a real increased urgency. So things like closing the sandhill fishery across the UK, so seabirds aren't directly competing with, with people for stuff to feed their chicks. Um, also uh, looking at the sort of fishing gear that people are using so that birds are not caught in, um, in fishing gear so adult birds are not dying in that way and looking at um, disturbance and development around our coast that's onshore, offshore and looking at um, sensitively sighting things so we're not impacting on, on seabird colonies. I think the thing that's really important is to keep pressure on governments to do more because we really do need really basic things like research into how the virus is affecting uh, wild birds and not just poultry so we can do more to help them um, really to increase the money spent on testing and the resources for testing. I think how I feel changes day by day through the week so I'm four months in to doing this post. I think realising uh, how it's affecting species worldwide is, is pretty sobering and that you know the birds you know the barnacle geese that are affected here are affected in you know Germany and the Netherlands and loads of other countries as well so really realising the scale of it is 
very difficult. Um, I'm really heartened by the support that we have, by how many people we have getting in touch who are really concerned about their local birds. I really just want uh, politicians and you know government funded bodies to be doing more and not be seeing this. You know, this is a, a man-made situation. You know, this, this highly pathogenic version of the disease spread from poultry to wild birds. So we really need to step up our response to it.